Okay, so you're a sharp-suited mid-level executive and you found that it's time to change your BMW 3 Series for a newer model. Or is it? You buy a 320D because it drives nicely, it's pretty fast, and because it's a diesel, it's CO2 emissions, and therefore your tax bill, will be low. The 3 Series market share is huge, and it's hard for any other manufacturer to make a dent in it. It was particularly hard for Lexus to make a dent, because they've never actually had a diesel engine. That's because the Japanese haven't really been bothered about reducing CO2, preferring to save the planet by building hybrid petrol engines. But now they've relented, and the BMW 3 Series better watch out, because there's a new sheriff in town. The new Lexus IS220D. And it looks brilliant. I reckon Lexus have got it just about right with the IS, Although, much like many modern saloons, this rear three-quarter area does tend to make the wheels seem a bit small. But otherwise, it's a sleek-looking machine, and much better resolved than the slightly awkward-looking 3 Series. Oh, well, you know, you get in here and it's immediately very comfortable. It's not breaking any of the rules. You've still got big, nice, solid centre dash, lovely feeling steering wheel, leather bits here and there, nice bit of wood. The one thing you notice over the BMW is it's incredibly gadgety. It's got a push-button start, some brilliant dials, and this rather wonderful touchscreen sat-nav. And from in here, it definitely sounds very refined. It's only if you were standing outside that you realise it sounds like a box of spanners on a waltzer. Funnily enough, this actually drives like a much bigger car, which you'd expect, because the IS is based on a GS chassis, which is a 5 Series competitor. Now, the IS comes with a 2.2-litre four-pot diesel with 175 brake horsepower, which is the most in the sector, but the big news is 400 newton metres of torque. What you get with a big torquey diesel engine is lots of ability to go quickly, but no need to change gear. It's not as sporty as a petrol engine, but it's damn sight more relaxing. I'm really keen on this new crop of diesel engines we're getting. They're easy to use, they do 600 miles to a tank. But the torque is what counts. In acceleration on motorways, in overtaking, if you've got a torquey car, that's the one that'll win. So it's got the BMW 320D beat on power and torque, but there's one problem with the IS, and that it's fat. It's got about 150 kilo deficit on the 320D, which makes it almost a second slower to 62. So it comes down to your choice. Do you want to be able to say, my car's faster than your car, or my car's torquier and more refined than your car? Lexus really have gone to a lot of effort with this car. It's got knee airbags and a world-first dual-chamber design that protects your head and supports your shoulders. Mark Levinson Hi-Fi, where even the sun visors deflect sound in an acoustically pleasing way, while the windscreen has been specially tuned to remove vibration frequencies that the diesel engine produces. The sat-nav has an all-new high-definition screen with a bigger colour palette, which doubles as a rear-view camera when you select reverse gear. Though, I have to say, I don't really trust it because I failed to see the sound recorder's mixer when I was reversing. You definitely notice the fact that they're calling this a sports saloon. It's quite stiff, quite firmly sprung, but the damping's very good, so it, it isolates you away from the road. Turn in, though, it still doesn't quite have the edge. It's, it's about 90% there, but not quite as dynamic as you'd like it. It doesn't feel as edgy as the BM. But then again, I didn't buy, or I wouldn't buy, a car like this to be edgy. You know, if I've got to cover 30,000 miles a year, I don't want a car that only satisfies me 10% of the time. I'd prefer something that really did isolate me and make me feel comfortable 90% of the time. It's a much better compromise for people like me who aren't exactly racing drivers. That doesn't mean to say I can't appreciate the sporty details, though, like the display on the rev counter and headlights that angle into a bend as you turn the steering wheel are a nice touch too. Overall, it's much higher spec than the equivalent BM, with the base model coming in at about £22,200, which works out about a grand less than a 320D. Yes, the BMW 320D is the faster car, but to be honest, I find talking about all that speed just a little bit vulgar. This is the gentleman's choice. <laughs>